Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Klein. I'm the director of P20 initiatives at Northern Illinois University. And I do a lot of different things with school districts and community colleges around the state of Illinois. But a big part of my job is helping school districts implement the career pathways and support work based learning. Well, since the shelter in place started, one of the things that went away in addition to being in school buildings with each other was the opportunity to be in workplaces doing job shadowing, internships and having those experiences. So the idea of this series, the Career Pathways Virtual Trailheads, is to bring the workplace to you, to students, with a variety of different occupations available for you to learn more about, as well as learn about those essential skills that cut across all careers. Today, this is part of a series of interviews we're going to have with uh, staff members in St. Charles, Illinois. And, and we don't often think of government as an important uh, industry, but it's super important. I work for the government, for example, and our guest today, Joan, she works with the government. So Joan, I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you introduce yourself. Thank you. Um, I'm Joan Scouten and I currently work for the City of St. Charles. I am their Purchasing Division Manager. A Purchasing Division Manager is an exciting position because you get to deal with all the other individuals and all the other departments. I get to work with engineers, I get to work with administrators, I get to work with the guys out in the field who get their hands dirty, and I get to work with the guy, the finance and the uh, HR people as well. And what do I do for them? Anytime they need to either order a good, an item, something that's tangible, or hire a consultant for a service or hire a, another company to facilitate our services, they have to go through purchasing. In purchasing in a government scenario, we spend the taxpayer's dollars. Now, if you like to spend money and shop, this could sound kind of exciting because that's what I do. I spend other people's money. When you work for the government, you have to be very uh, prudent and very careful on how you spend government money. You have to follow the laws and you have to follow the documentation and you have to make sure that everything is fair and transparent and ethical and accountable and professional. Um, how do we do this? Well, we use the computer a lot. There's, you use spreadsheets like from Excel, you communicate in on the web, you, you use different software, um, you might make brochures or advertisements to build your vendor base or educate your vendor base. You are helping write technical stuff from the engineers or the guys out in the field on what it is exactly that they want to order or serve. You have to make sure that what the vendors um, are getting and reading and reviewing isn't is um, under clearly understood. So there are some writing skills that are needed. Sometimes you have to write very simply in your writing instructions, and sometimes you're writing very visually so they can see what it is that they have to do or provide. Um, frequently, it. It is, you, it is a team effort. So whereas a procurement person might gather all the information, the procurement person depends on the other departments um, and it's a team work. So we have the end user and we have their boss who might be watching the money and you have a procurement person who's doing the documentation and depending on what it is, you might need a lawyer to help look at contract information and you need somebody in finance to make sure all the money's available. So the procurement person tends to be a liaison or team leader or facilitator to help spend the money. So, um, Joan, let me let me jump in because you, you've given us a lot of information. There's a lot involved in, you know, I can't help but think about my friend Shar, who was uh, one of the school districts I was in. Shar was our, our head of purchasing and she had to become an expert on everything. I mean, I was in charge of technology. And so as we would start a process and, and technology is exempted in Illinois for school districts from requiring an RFP. And I'll ask you in a few minutes to talk about 
about those kinds of processes and explain to, to people what those are. Um, but the, oftentimes we also, we did them anyways. And, and you know, when we would start those processes, Char would know nothing about those things. And by the end of it, she would be uh, maybe not quite as expert as the members of our of our IT team, but but probably second after, after them. And so tell us about with all of these different people you work with and all of these different things that St. Charles has to purchase, um, what is a typical day look like in your job? Um, can you walk us through that? Well, um, while there is no two days that are exactly alike because you rarely order exactly the same thing all the time or, or, or try and solicit and, and buy it, um, a typical day is someone from out in the field, someone from another department might contact me and say, okay, I need to or hire a consultant to do this or we're looking for, uh, we have this project and this is what we need. So they will tell me what they need and maybe provide documentation, which is very technical. And my job then is to take that and read it and say, okay, but if I'm a business person, I need to know this and this, which isn't clear. So I may work with that end user or that person from another department and say, okay, you said all this, but what is the size of it? Or how long do you want this service for? Or what is the budget for this? Or I don't understand, where is it located? Or, or some of the questions that they may not think of. I kind of look at it as a jack of all trades and master of none. And when you're a master, you know exactly what you want, but you may not think of it from another person's perspective. Mm -hmm. So procurement brings in that other perspective. So this, this is a lot to keep track of. I mean, you've really emphasized the, the team aspect of your work. Um, so I've got a couple of questions in the planning and organizing area, because uh, that seems like that would probably be very important to be successful yeah. in your work. First of all, what are your tips and tricks for keeping organized? What advice, you know, what what would you say you would tell someone coming into, into your work to do to keep themselves organized? Well, that's a very key skill at the moment um, because government technologically is a little slower than the private sector. So technologically, government is just now getting into some of the software that can assist in tracking and managing this. Um, but before it's fully implemented and different people implement at different stages, you have to be organized, whether it's the uh, a detailed calendar day planner or whether it's um, post-it notes on a, on a Kanban board or whether it's um, Excel spreadsheets, um, you have to be organized. And even color-coded uh, file folders have worked in the past. But now the uh, technology is catching up and providing us software that allows us to um, track every project as it goes through the different phases. And when I say phases, there's probably 15 different stages for doing a solicitation and different paperwork or different approvals or different uh, documentation that is required to go through each of those stages. And I say documentation required because again, in government, you have to be very transparent and let everyone know why you are doing something and what the rationale and what the criteria is in order to make something proceed to the next stage. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about different stages, I might have the first stage might be, okay, I know that Ken in engineering has this project coming on and Tim over in this department has this project coming on. So I know what's coming in the future. Meanwhile, I got documents from Larry saying, this is what we're working on, but I got to read it through to kind of figure out, okay, this is good, but I need to know a little more information here. At the same time, I have something on the street for Jen, who is who I have vendors coming back to me and saying, we read what you have, but can you clarify this? And then there's probably result uh, responses coming in from three or four different vendors on something that I have out there for Chris, where I have to do some mathematical analysis of dollars and um, hours spent and um, if they 
have all the compliance to the required government requirements. And then it goes back to Chris or whoever the evaluation team is, and they are looking over everything to make sure that who is qualified to do the work and how are they documenting that they are qualified. And by the way, are they providing exactly what we asked for? And then when they say, this is who we think is the most qualified with what we've asked for, then we got to make sure that the contract is all in compliance and then it might require a legal review and then it might then it will have to go to the government council uh, most likely for their um, blessing and their review to make sure everything is um, compliant and the best value for the city and it's still a good a good expenditure of public funds and then we get to start the work so it's a so lengthy process with multiple it, steps. It is a lengthy process. And again, it's very clear how many people you interact with on a regular basis. So um, two kind of opposite sides of the coin questions here coming up. Uh, the first, um, what, what is the most exciting aspect of your, of your work? Well, the most exciting, what I find most exciting is, is twofold. One, I enjoy knowing that what I'm doing and all of my attention to detail is to better the community that I live in. It's my way of contributing and giving back. And that's just a, an internal value that I have that I want to know that I'm doing good. I'm not motivated so much by making money or but but I want to make the, the world a better place. So that is exciting for me. Um, the other thing is I'm somebody who likes to solve puzzles or keep things in order or um, just just keep things flowing and moving. I like throughput. I like, like you fit here and I finish there. So I get excited when I can see things come off the back end and, and be complete and know that when they um, uh, when they repaired that bridge or when they built that building or when they hired this company to do this, I had a little part of it. That is a sense of, of pride and, and contribution. So the flip side of that then is in all of our jobs, there's either work that we don't like to do or that uh, people from the outside might not know is part of our job. What is what is something in your work uh, that that either people would have no idea you have to do or that might be whether for you or for other people that do the work uh kind of a source of drudgery and and not maybe the most fun part of the job but we we really want to expose all aspects of the workplace yeah. as as we learn about them so we don't think that a job is just going to be the one glamorous thing that that people might be thinking it is you're right, and it, and every job does have a little bit of drudgery, and the drudgery could be all the paperwork. Not most people. Most people do not want to enter a career saying, "I love to do paperwork," or "I love to do detail work," um, and yet it's kind of exciting. It, it's a drudgery because, again, when you work with different people, different people approach things different way, and some people are easier to work with than others, and some people understand. Why I ask questions from left field when they know exactly what they want and they thought they said it clearly. So sometimes that clarification can, you know, personalities, you got to you got to work with a lot of people. But um, probably the drudgery is a lot of the detail and they say the devil's in the detail, but that could be drudgery. Um, and then again, once you put that last puzzle piece in it's done and it can keep going but until you find that last piece mm -hmm. it just sits and and pesters you so i think some of the drudgery is the detail and the paperwork um but again uh once you get that done there's a feeling of satisfaction cool um so kind of kind of finishing up because you really hit on some of the other questions in some really some really neat ways and certainly talked about how you feel like your work has a positive impact on the world and I appreciate uh, you bringing that up on your own without without even being prompted but what what advice would you give for a student who might be kind of trying to figure out their career uh, regardless of what that career is as you look back on your career experience what would just be kind of the single most important piece of advice you would give a student 
I think I have been asked that question before, and I never knew really what I wanted to do when I was younger. Um, I thought I wanted to be a teacher and I've done some teaching, but in my job, I'm teaching people the processes or teaching them and walking them through how to do how to do these solicitations. At some time, time in my life, I thought, oh, law might be interesting. But I am dealing with contract law mm -hmm. and looking at things from perspective of a lawyer of where are the loopholes. Um, because I didn't know what I wanted to do, I'm very fascinated by hearing what do these engineers do and how does how does um, IT solve this problem? And sometimes I'm not looking for a service as much as I'm out to buy a solution to a problem. Mm -hmm. So so I find it exciting because I get exposure into all different trades and specialties um, that I would have never even thought of coming from a school environment. Be before I did purchasing in government, I also did purchasing in the private sector. And that had even a wider group of uh, companies and businesses to get into. I got to tool, tour plants and I got to tour um, steel melting uh, facilities. I got to tour um, corporate offices and, and offices overseas. I got to work with dollars and I got to work with yen and I got to work with Deutschmarks. Um, so there's a, a pursuing purchasing, which are skills, does give you insight into so many different areas. So whenever I meet new people, I ask what they do. And usually there's some connection I can make with them because I have some little familiarity with what they, with what they do through my work in purchasing. So to pin you down, your advice though would be, my advice would be if you if you are interested in learning, purchasing is a good place to be because you're always learning about your clients, your internal customers' business, and you're always dealing with a lot of new contractors or businesses who want to serve you. So you get to look at things from the whole, from all aspects of the supply chain. Yeah, it, as, as I said earlier in this process, it is an incredibly interesting job, uh, particularly in government when you think about the range of, of things you're responsible for. I mean, again, in my experiences in the school district, we're doing everything from parking lots and construction to mm -hmm. books and computers and 3D printers and so uh, to, to healthcare products, right? I mean, oh, that yeah. are part of our part of our schools. And so, um, yeah, there's there's no shortage of things. I am sure that you would be hard pressed to meet somebody and not be able to have some connection from yes. your work experiences. So, um, well, this has been super, super helpful. I really appreciate it. You certainly have a career that highlights the importance of collaboration and the importance of organization. Uh, those things are clear as you manage all of these different projects with all these different people. And so thank you so much, Joan, for joining us today. You're welcome. Glad to have been here. For those of you watching, remember this is another in our Career Pathways Virtual Trailhead series from Broadway to an electrical outlet uh, and everything in between. We've got the occupations covered and more coming. If you have ideas about an occupation you'd like to see us highlight, about a specific person you think would make a great guest, or certain questions you would like us to ask, please go ahead and share those with us on Twitter. Our Twitter account is at P20 Network. That's at P20 Network. And for example, one of the questions we asked we asked uh, Joan today came through that kind of dialogue uh, that resulted from a Twitter connection. So thank you again for watching. We look forward to bringing you more of these. And Joan, thanks again for participating. You're welcome.